Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Katie and today I wanna show you all of the volunteer plants that we have growing out in our garden. We have a ton of free plants. So I've got a ton of volunteers and in this garden bed behind me, I have some squash that just is so persistent. I've taken these seedlings out so many times. I've done it about four weeks in a row now and these seedlings just keep popping back up and I've probably taken maybe 60, 60 different volunteer plants out. So I'm gonna show you what these look like. I am gonna pull these out because I do not wanna grow zucchini or squash in this bed. Okay, these right here, you guys, are the volunteer plants and they're actually getting pretty big. I saw them this week, but I wanted to save it so I can show you. So you can see these here and then there's littler ones under there. So like I said, I've pulled at least maybe 60, 70 little shoots out. I'm gonna take these out also. I don't want these growing in my garden, but I hate to take them out. This is actually my pepper bin. So we've got peppers growing here. But these are healthy and they're doing good. So I really do hate to take them out, but I just don't want big squash plants here. I'm gonna pull these out because we don't want these growing in this garden bed, but I just wanted to show you how persistent these guys are. So hopefully we'll pull them out and we'll be done with them for the year. We'll see. So this is what they look like. We're getting some roots on them. Now I see a couple things here, just some weeds. I'm gonna get rid of these. Okay, next I'm gonna show you some volunteer green beans. So last year I had rattlesnake green beans growing up on this trellis right here. And we did get some volunteers. Now these, they didn't drop their little seeds in the perfect spot. So we had some volunteers growing up that weren't in a real ideal location. So some of them I've taken out over the last couple weeks, but there's one that's in a perfect spot. There's actually about three. So let me show you those. So hopefully those will do well. They look like they're pretty healthy and hopefully they can just grow up and we'll have more green beans. Okay, so as I come from our backyard garden and I walk to the next area I wanna show you, I notice this little tiny tomato plant, this cherry tomato plant over here in the rocks by our fountain. So let me show you how our garden is kind of laid out so you can get an idea where this is. Okay, you guys, just kind of give you an idea. Here's our backyard we come over here and we have this huge area with like rock. We have like a little fountain kind of thing here. And all the way over here, is a volunteer tomato. Like in all this rock, no special attention, only rainwater, and it's thriving. It's out here living its best life. Okay, so I'm out here in the back and I wanted to show you some volunteers that came up. They really want to grow. They really want to live. So let me show you where these little tomato plants decided to make a home for themselves. Okay, you guys, so you see these troughs that we were using we were growing tomatoes and this one right here and right next to it we have this pot and we didn't put anything in it but let me show you what's happening in here if you can see it's kind of dark in there but what is that can you guys see these tomato plants have just decided to start growing in here. Now, the, now there's hardly any dirt so if you guys can see kind of in the bottom there you can see the plastic bottom got spiders everywhere but these plants are in there and they're growing okay another volunteer is right here in this garden bed behind me so I'm going to show you what that is it's actually carrots so over on this side let me spin you around on that third garden bed right over there we grew carrots last year and they were super tiny like they didn't grow very well we didn't end up harvesting a lot of them to eat ourselves we did give them to the animals but they went to seed and i was gonna save the seed but then i thought well the carrots are so tiny i didn't i didn't end up saving the seed but they did go to seed before it pulled them out so what has happened as a result of that in this garden bed we've got a volunteer carrot and i'm going to take you out back we've picked we've cleaned up so many but i'm going to show you we've got carrots all over our driveway they're growing like grass out here so let me show you that next 
Here's our volunteer carrot. So we're just letting it stay. I'm not pulling it out, but it's right there. And I'll show you a ton of volunteer carrots all over the yard. So this is kind of the path that I take to walk from the garden we were just in, where we had those raised beds where I was growing carrots, and then back out to the animals. So I'm gonna show you what the trail looks like, what the pathway kind of looks like now, a year later, after I took all those carrots out to the animals. Let me show you what we're dealing with. There's just, the seed just spread everywhere, likely as I was walking them right out to the animals, and they were full of seed. And I'll show you, we've got carrots growing all throughout the driveway. Okay, so these are carrots. They're growing right there. Obviously that's not like a super ideal spot right next to the house, but we've got carrots growing there. Um, along the driveway, you could see these are carrots. Those are little carrots. Here's more, you could see the leaf type, if you can see, so like this is the carrot right here, carrot. And of course there's weeds and stuff, we need to just kind of weed eat this, but I really wanted to show you. So here's more carrots. Well, now we've pulled out a ton of them, a ton of them already, and there's carrots there. There's more. So they're all throughout here. I wanted to save this. I wouldn't let Gary take them down this week because I wanted to show you guys. Let's see if I can pull it out here. So I do want to show you one thing that does seem to happen though whenever you have a lot of driveway carrots growing out on your property. Let me show you what that looks like because this is new this year. You get bunny rabbits. So we knew we had a couple of bunny rabbits. First we saw one, then we, you know, a month later we saw a second one. So we've just seen these two little bunnies. And tonight I'm out feeding, there's five rabbits. They're running all over our field. It's a nice cool evening and they are loving life. Okay, you guys, here's more. So look at this. These are all carrots. Look at these things. And they're growing in this rock. So this is actually like our back driveway to where the animals are. And they're just growing, growing, growing. So they're tiny. Like this one that you saw me pull out, it's pretty small, like maybe two inches. So it's pretty tiny. You're not gonna get a huge harvest maybe out of your driveway carrots. But the animals are sure gonna like these. And we didn't do anything special. So you can see all of these carrots we've got growing in our driveway, like our driveway. Imagine if you actually tried to grow them in your garden. And you can see I definitely didn't do anything special to try to get these to grow. I literally just pulled the carrots out of our raised bed last year, walked them to the animals and the seeds kind of sprinkled as I was doing that. I didn't intentionally do that, but now we have a driveway with a bunch of carrots. The animals are gonna appreciate that. This is our little rescue farm cat. Her name is Keeks. She's always hanging around, see if she can get a snack. So I'm gonna give these carrots to the animals. I'm gonna walk through the animal yard to get to our very back garden so I can show you what's going on out there from a volunteer standpoint. But as I do that, I'm gonna give these guys a little snack and I'm just gonna show you some of the animals that are on my path as I head back to this very back animal garden. So we let all of the little dandelions grow, you guys, because there's honeybees everywhere and we want to encourage them to hang out by our garden.
All right, you guys, we're out here in the very back garden, and this is by far where we have the most volunteers. We have so many tomato plants volunteering that it is difficult to keep up with it from a weed pulling perspective. So let me show you what's going on out here. If we didn't plant any tomatoes, I bet we'd have more than we could even keep up with. So let me show you what this looks like. Okay, so these are all volunteer tomatoes. So you can see I planted my pepper plant. Like that's a pepper plant there. That one's a pepper plant, this big one here. Here's another pepper plant. But in here, all of this, like all of these right here are all tomatoes. They're everywhere. So let me kind of pull back and give you a better shot of what this looks like. But over here, I mean, there's just clumps of volunteers, more volunteers over there. They're really, everywhere throughout this raised garden bed. So all these things you see are for the most part, there might be like, there's a weed right there, but for the most part, these are tomatoes. Volunteer tomatoes. This is some unknown volunteer squash. And there's more tomatoes here, here. They're just kind of popping up. So you can see them throughout. So I didn't plant any of these tomatoes. Everything I planted here was peppers. Peppers. There's a huge volunteer tomato. So this is a tomato right here. It's growing next to my pepper, but it doesn't belong there. So this guy is a volunteer. Pops up. He's shading out my pepper. So he's got to move. These tomatoes are going to have to move out. But I just wanted to show you that if you didn't go to the store and buy plants, like if you just threw some seeds in your garden or your tomatoes that like, if you ever have any tomatoes in your fridge and you can't use them, throw them in your garden, throw them in a bucket with some dirt. Here's another volunteer tomato. So this is getting pretty big, right? These are getting pretty good size, but that's not what I wanted here. I wanted my pepper. Okay, so this, again, I'm just taking you further around this bed. Tomatoes everywhere. So all of these are tomato plants. That is another volunteer unknown squash plant. And then some more tomato plants. So this is my green bean. I planted that. But everything else around here is either weeds. So like a couple of these, like that's weeds. I need to pull that out. But these are all volunteer tomatoes. Here's another larger volunteer tomato. And we are getting a bunch of weeds. So like we're starting to get these weeds. I need to get this cleaned up. Okay, you guys, so I should do that side. I'm just gonna show you this side here real quick so you can see there's not as many volunteers on this side, but there's still just a completely ridiculous amount and we're gonna have to pull them out. So there's one there. You can see several, several over there. So these bigger ones, these are the tomato plants I planted not that much bigger actually um, but like that's a volunteer right next to one I planted so I planted this one I planted this one and here's some volunteers right next to it the size difference is not even that big now I planted mine really deep in the ground so that they could establish better roots but they're not so far behind like if you just threw some old tomatoes out in a bucket of dirt and made sure they had some water or left them out in the rain really they might grow so i'm so excited you guys i saved the best for last for sure so this bed right behind me we grew malabar spinach in it last year and i had done a lot of research and i read that that is supposed to self-seed pretty easily and come back each year I was so worried about it though, because if you watched my previous video when we prepped our garden beds for planting, I had to weed this garden bed pretty heavily. So I was kind of concerned that I wasn't gonna have any seeds left in there from last year to restart. But let me show you what I have. I'm so excited. Okay, you guys, these are what I think are my Malbar spinach seedlings. So I didn't do anything special to get this to happen. I grew my Malbar spinach on this trellis in this garden bed right up this trellis last year we had cucumbers over here and then the malabar spinach on this side so all i did was just grow it here i didn't do anything special and i think that these are its little seedlings so charlie's out here with me he's just eating some green grass so him lola emma they're all out here in this backyard like their animal yard that's right next to our garden 
and he's making sure that just in case there's any tomatoes or extra zucchini that he's out here available to take it now our garden's not producing yet so hopefully it will pretty soon but little charlie he'll be out here to help me out and keep me company anytime i'm in this back animal garden Thanks for hanging out with us, you guys. If you like this video, then be sure to press that like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can keep up with what's going on here at Mayfield Ranch each week. We'll see you next week with a new video.